it's Nicole and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be my first set of repots for the year. I'm going to start out a little easier and work on some seedlings. Some of these are going to be a little bit more challenging and some of them are going to be easier, but in all, they're going to be the easiest set of repots I have. As you can see, they are starting to push out some new roots, which is an ideal time to get them repotted. Um, once roots are coming out, they're going to adapt to their new conditions. And I'm going to be moving them out of these little plastic cups and putting them into an organic setup. So no more LECA for these. I'm going to put them in some bark and sphagnum moss, but most of them are pushing out roots, which is perfect. Not all of them, but this is the ideal time to repot. I have some uh, bark over here. I have some sphagnum moss and pots, and we are going to get started. I also have a container to dump the LECA, some alcohol, cutting shears, and I am ready to go. So let's get started. So I started recording the first two, and um, they didn't record properly. So this is the third one, but don't worry, guys. I am going to cover a lot of ground here. So this is the third orchid that I'm repotting. It doesn't have the best root system, and um, I'm just putting that to the side. We're gonna start cutting the roots a little later. The first two that I started, I, um, I took them out, and there's a couple that I left soaking because they have too many roots, so we are gonna free them a bit later. This one's the BLC Hawaiian Leopard Mei Ling. I definitely need a new tag for that one. This is another one of those Richard Mueller hybrids. I find that these are very, very vigorous and they have really nice root systems. So I'm taking it out of the, um, the cup. I had it soaking just for a little while. I might have to soak it a little longer. So I'm just gonna do that for now. And then we are gonna do this other Richard Mueller hybrid. As you guys can tell, I really like them. I'll, I'll stop talking about them. <laughs> but this one was soaking for a bit. I, um, I'm trying to get it out of the cup, but I'm finding that there's so many roots in there that it's a little crowded, so I'm gonna have to start cutting around the pot. Um, sometimes in semi-hydro, I find that the repotting can be very, very difficult. Like a lot of people like semi-hydro because it is an inorganic setup where you don't really have to repot so often. But the issue is when you have them in small pots or like a cup like this, they can crowd the cup very easily and fill up all of the air gaps that it has. And eventually it begins to suffocate itself and the roots die off. I mean, it's okay for a while, but in the long run, you do have to free the LECA from the air gaps and kind of give it more room. So generally it's fine, but you can't just always pot it up into a new pot. I mean, I guess you can and then wait for those roots to die. But then if you're potting it up with more LECA, you kind of fall into the cycle where you are making a root ball that's hard to remove into another root ball. You guys kind of get it, but... Anyway, I finally freed this. There's a ton of algae here. I am going to soak that for a little while and we're gonna start working on some of the other orchids that I freed up a little earlier. And we're gonna cut out the dead roots. So we're looking for anything that's a little squishy and hollow and anything that's very firm to the touch and green like these where the LECA is still holding on, these roots are alive. Now this orchid doesn't have a super extensive root system but it's totally fine. Um, I'm gonna move it over to um, organic for wet dry cycles. I'm gonna leave little pieces of LECA here um, that are attached to the roots because I don't wanna disturb it too much. So we're gonna put that to the side. And in between um, different plants, I'm going to sterilize my cutting tools with alcohol because in case there's like a disease or anything on one, I don't wanna transfer it to another one. If you're working with an orchid that has a known uh, disease or something, you may also wanna wash your hands in between. I don't think mine do, so I'm just gonna keep going, but that's something that you wanna do for cleanliness. So I'm gonna repeat the same thing. I'm gonna be cutting off any roots that are very hollow, and we are going to uh, then move on, but so far this orchid is fine. It has really nice roots. We have two new growths coming in on the side, which is amazing. But this, this root right here was a little squishy, so I removed it. Everything else looks good. I was actually quite surprised with a lot of the root systems on some of these. And um, I'm really glad that we have some decent roots. We have new, new growths coming in, so that's amazing. 
And we are gonna move on to the next orchid. I'm sterilizing my cutting tools again, just because I just don't want anything to be spread, just in case. But this one is also a really good root system. I'm gonna try to remove some of that LECA if I can. If not, it's okay if it stays on. It's not crowded or anything. It's not gonna break down. Perfectly acceptable to leave some LECA and rocks um, if it's going to bark and sphagnum moss. But this root system also looks good. So, I mean, semi-hydro works really well for my cattleyas generally. The roots look good. It's just in the long run where I'm a little concerned, but I'm gonna leave this, these little pieces in here. I'm not really finding much by way of dead roots on this, so we're gonna let it be and move on to this more challenging one. So this orchid, I left soaking for about 20 minutes, and then I wanna get into that root ball because it's gonna get crowded. I wanna leave it in a pot that I could put in for at least the next two years, right? So I am trying to remove the LECA very carefully, just digging into it little by little without trying to <laughs> break the roots. Now this is one of those uh, Richard Mueller hybrids, again, that are very vigorous. So, I mean, if I were dealing with like my Cattleya valkyriana, which is also in semi-hydro, I would be more careful. But since this is a very vigorous hybrid that puts in a lot of new roots, if I damage a couple of roots, it's going to be fine. It's going to bounce back very easily just because of its vigor. So I'm just pretty much here just trying to loosen this up little by little, just pulling out some of those LECA pieces. Thankfully, it's starting to move, but it's kind of like glue. LECA kind of adheres to the roots really, really well and it's it could be a little frustrating when you're repotting so you really have to take your time with this so like i was saying this is a really vigorous one um it's going to be tough to remove all of this leka and you know i'm just trying to be really careful in trying to get everything out and let me actually um pull up the id so this one is another richard Mueller hybrid so it's going to be really really vigorous so part of me is thinking like i could leave some of the LECA on here and it should be okay but I could wrap it around with bark and moss and eventually those roots are going to die so in the next repot I could just cut the core out and anything with bark and sphagnum moss is going to be much easier to remove so that's one way I could deal with it but the thing is if you up pot it with LECA then you have a never-ending problem because the new roots adhere to the other ones and then you have dead roots in the middle Check out Ninja Orchids. She does a really good job of repotting these. It just takes a really, really long time. So I'm just trying to be patient here and not trying to kill the roots. But then again, if I do kill some of the roots, I know that this is gonna be a very vigorous hybrid that's gonna make it. So I'm slowly just trying to like take anything that slips off. Soaking and saturating, it helps. I notice I still have a piece of charcoal in here from last year when I repotted it. Um, that was stuck to some new roots, so that was finally able to come out. So, I mean, I'm just digging in here, just, just trying my best. It's kind of tough, right? I'm going to just go ahead and soak this for a while longer and then come back and try a little bit later. We're going to move on to the next orchid. So this next one will be equally as challenging because it is another Richard Mueller hybrid. It has a new growth um, and it's a little lopsided because the roots come in after the growth. So it's a little bit weird to deal with, but we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna just start poking in there and start freeing any LECA that comes off. I'm trying not to force anything off too harshly because then I will break roots. There's gonna be root damage no matter what. Repotting can be difficult, but the perfect thing with this one is that it has new roots coming in, so I'm not too concerned. Like I said, this one's another um, Richard Mueller hybrid, so it's going to bounce back no matter what. So I just started getting in there a little bit more aggressively. I don't want to set this back, but like I said, if you have new roots, you're golden because then that new root system is going to take over. Um, I some some cattleyas they dump their roots in a repot anyway, um, so generally you are okay. I mean, we definitely don't want to intentionally uh, mess up these roots, but this one is totally fine. I'm getting a little bit more aggressive. This was soaking a little while longer, so it made it a little bit more easier to remove some of these. But you could see, like, 
as we get into the core in there, you could see that roots have grown into every single air gap in there. So over time, those will eventually die because orchids need airflow and gaps in between. So this one I'm more hopeful for because I'm starting to remove more of these pieces of LECA. I just wanna be careful with any of the new roots that are coming in at the top. But with the old roots, I'm just getting a little bit more aggressive. They are coming out. I, I'll keep repeating it just because it might save you some grief in the long run, but semi-hydro is cool with like self-watering and you can keep them hydrated and stuff, but when it comes to repotting, it is a nightmare. <laughs> so getting the LECA off is hard and then you have to wash the LECA afterwards, which can be a pain in the ass. And then you have to sanitize it. And then I know it is more eco-friendly, absolutely. It is cleaner than dealing with bark and sphagnum moss. Some argue, absolutely, after you sanitize, but it's a lot of work. You have to soak it, you have to treat it. It is hard, and as you can see, I'm getting these pieces off. It's not that straightforward. I find, I find bark and sphagnum moss a lot easier to deal with, but now that we're finally getting into the core of this plant, I'm actually very impressed with how many roots that it's pushed out because it is amazing. It was in that little cup of, that was like, what, two and a half, maybe three inches, and look at all those roots. So we're definitely upgrading this pot to like a three or four, not a three inch, a four or five inch pot. And this is looking amazing. So I'm gonna wash that algae off. I'm gonna be very careful with any LECA up at the top. But the most important part is that we have those new roots. So this one is a done. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Same thing here. Um, I left this to soak. We have new roots coming in. This is a similar situation as the other two. Um, but we have some dead roots in there, so hopefully this LECA will come out a little bit easier. So I'm just digging my nail in there. I'm trying to be really careful with those new roots. You could tell the new roots because they are fuller, but we have some dead roots. So this should technically be easier. The LECA will come off um, from dead roots very easily. It's the roots that are alive. It's kind of like glue. They just get stuck to the clay, especially if that clay is not hydrated it's impossible to remove so that's why i soak for a while and just completely saturate the um the root ball this is in semi-hydro so i mean it's always wet the bottom was always wet well i mean they dried out a lot these cups only held water for about a day or two with these root systems so that that was a bummer but by soaking the whole cup I was able to saturate the LECA even more, especially up top where it just had like humid conditions, not necessarily fully wet conditions, and it helps free it up. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm just digging my nail in here and I'm pulling out the LECA. I'm clearly starting to get more um, impatient with some of these the more that I go through it. and. It's okay, this is another hybrid. Like I said, if it were a species orchid, I wouldn't be getting this aggressive. We are damaging a couple of roots, but I mean, this is a really nice root system. We have new roots coming in, so that's why I'm okay with it. Like I said, some of these will dump their roots and we are just getting in there. So we're just trying to find openings here. And like I said, there's dead roots in the middle, so some of them are gonna come out. We're gonna cut off those dead roots soon. I'm just amazed at how many roots grew into these tiny pots, so we have to get these into bigger pots. I originally had planned to pot them into four inch pots, but I found with some of these root systems, I had to move to five inch pots. Um, I had to immediately rethink what sort of setup we're gonna go in. And obviously I'm getting a lot more aggressive here. And like I said, like this is a vigorous hybrid. It's okay, some of these roots are getting damaged, but New roots coming in, it's gonna be A-OK. -okay. So I think we're, we're just gonna leave those, those LECA pieces closer to the top in there, the ones that are closer to the newer roots, and we are gonna start cutting off those hollow dead roots here, um, and it'll be all prepped for our next pot. But yeah, we're going from these tiny little cups to a larger pot, so it's gonna cost me, it's gonna cause me some space issues, but that's okay. 
some of these I cannot wait to see bloom. This one has not bloomed for me yet, but I have a feeling it's gonna start blooming very soon. But look at those roots. I can't believe those were in that little cup. Okay, we're going back to that original plant that we soaked for a while. So we're gonna start removing the Leca pieces a little bit more. This one has been soaking for about 20 more minutes and I did find that it made, made it a little bit easier to remove, but oh, I just knocked the root out. So I felt a little bad, um, but I wanna be careful with the new roots uh, up at the tippy top, but just given that I've done quite a few removals, I'm feeling much more aggressive than I was before. It's a kind of like a fine line, right? So I recommend whenever you're repotting, Work with your more delicate orchids first because you're gonna have more patience. And when you are dealing with a lot of orchids at once, you tend to get a little bit more rough over time. I mean, just think about it. You're gonna spend an hour removing roots, right? So you're logically, unless you have just one to deal with, two to deal with, when you're on the fifth or sixth, you get a little bit more impatient. And this one is, that hybrid, that, that Richard Mueller hybrid, the Haiku Dawn, that's gonna be very vigorous. So I'm completely fine with getting a little bit more rough with this. Highly recommend you deal with your species first. Let it be your first repot, be more delicate with that. Then you can really get your hands dirty with the hybrids that have new growths coming in, that you know are vigorous, that you know that can handle it if you lose some roots. They may dump their roots, um, not all the time, but a lot of times cattleyas do, especially bifoliate cattleyas. The most important part is that you have some new roots coming in. So I'm just gonna get a little bit more rough with this one, just getting the, those pieces of leka off. And I'm gonna fast forward here so I don't bore you with removing every single little piece of leka in slow motion. This video is gonna be long enough to begin with. Um, in all, it took me about an hour and 20 minutes to get everything done from start to finish, but this video is probably gonna be closer to half an hour. Um, but yeah, I'm just removing everything. I'm getting a little bit more aggressive with it and we're gonna start cutting off those roots that are dead, keep anything that's alive clearly, and then we're gonna move forward with moving these to newer pots. They're going with um, some fresh bark and sphagnum moss, so they will be transitioned over, but I am amazed at these root systems. They're, they've grown so much. All right, I have some four inch pots here and we have everything with clean roots. We're gonna start with a little bit of sphagnum moss on the bottom of the pot, then we're gonna put some bark here. I've soaked the bark, so it's prepped and ready to go. We're gonna start with an easy one that doesn't have a crazy root system, but it should be fine in this four inch pot. You don't wanna put any new orchids in a pot that's too, too big. Arguably, I probably could have put this into a three inch pot, but I find that I don't wanna to have to repot right away. So I'm gonna keep it pretty airy in here. My rationale for the sphagnum moss is that I do need a little bit more moisture. I'm going to, I'm looking to see where there's new growths and where there's old growths. So I'm positioning the old growths towards the back of the pot. So the older growth is towards the back and where the newer growths are coming from, where I think the new growths will sprout, I'm giving some room for it. I really don't wanna be repotting this like in nine months. <laughs> and that's a problem I tend to have. I don't know if it's my orchid hobbyist lights or what, but my cattleyas, especially seedlings, tend to grow really fast. So I'm layering this with some moss and bark the roots are gonna adapt really well because they were in a semi-hydro setup which was inherently very moist. So I learned this system from Miss Orchid Girl. It tends to work really well for me for all of my orchids. The only time where I think it, you will have an adjustment period is if you were dealing with just bark and you were letting it really dry out fully. Given that this was very moist, it's still gonna get a wet dry cycle but it will be able to handle the moisture from just basically having been in semi-hydro, so I think it adapts well. I think even using moss, it will adapt well, but moss is a little trickier to deal with, trickier to um, flush and stuff, so that's why I like the bark in here. And I'm just covering it up. 
It's a little wobbly, but it's fine. Um, we could put a support stake in there if we need to. And this one is all done. Let's move on to the next one. So, yep, we are starting with the easy one. So this one does not have a very extensive root system. We are gonna put in a smaller pot. So initially I thought a four inch pot would be good, but that's too much. This one is an old growth that's dying back, but we have a new growth coming in. Unfortunately, we don't have new roots here, so that's not ideal, but we do have viable roots. I hope this doesn't decline. The best time to repot is when you see new roots coming in, but this is honestly, I don't think it enjoyed semi-hydro just given the lack of root growth. So I hope that giving it wet dry cycles will help. We're sizing the pot down. I wanted to do four inches, but with that tiny root system, that pot is gonna stay too wet. So we want an appropriate pot size. So that's why instead of four inches, I moved to a three inch pot. I really hate these repot me pots with a little slits on it because if you guys have been following me for a while you know that repotting them is a nightmare for me because the roots just go through every little slit you have to cut them you can't reuse them so I mean it is what it is but I want to use what I have and just given that this one doesn't seem very vigorous I think it's okay um, but hey if it grows roots through the little slots then I'll deal with it later but we're gonna layer the sphagnum moss, we're gonna layer the bark, and we're gonna get it going. We may need a little stake for this, just given the lack of roots. And we need something to prop it up, right? I soaked the bark, um, so it is nice and moist already, and the sphagnum moss was already prepped as well. Um, but we don't want this wobbling, so I am going to get a little support stake later to hold it up um, until it gets stabilized. I'm actually repotting it again because I wasn't satisfied without the stake. So I took the bark and the moss I put on the bottom. I got that stake here just because, you know, you just can't have your plant wobbling. And, you know, I have a cat that likes to touch everything. What if it falls out of the pot? So we're going to put the stake in there. We're gonna hold it and attach it to one of the growths and we're gonna surround it by the bark and the sphagnum moss. By the way, I got the uh, bark from Sunset Valley Orchids. It is, it was like $35 for the, um, I think it was a 50 quart bag. It was a lot. The shipping was very expensive. However, if you compare it to like some of the repot me mixes, I find that it's a good value despite the cost of the shipping. I think it was $60 for to ship it. But when you're dealing with plants in bulk, it's fine. Just add your own mixtures. It works out totally fine. So I'm going to get a Velcro, attach that together, and we'll move on. Okay, this next one we're going to put in a four inch pot. Now I prefer these pots because they don't have those little slits, right? <laughs> um, I wash them, I can reuse them. And I don't have to worry about the roots later on growing through those little slots. I don't really think you need those slots for aeration anyway. I mean, look at how those roots grew in semi-hydro. You're going to leave plenty of air gaps with the bark anyway. This one has two new roots, two new growths coming in. I think this will be perfectly fine in a four inch pot. You can just you never want to put a new orchid into a pot that's too big or it just stays too wet, which isn't good. So you want it to dry in an appropriate amount of time. You just don't want anything to stay, stay soggy, you know, and you'll get a feel for it as you're growing orchids. So I started with the moss. I'm positioning it where the old growths are at the very edge of the pot and the new growths have a lot of room to come in. I don't expect new growths to come in where the original growths were so that's something you have to keep in mind if I put this with the new growths at the edge of the pot I'll have to repot right away so that's something we don't want so always keep that in mind when you're repotting I'm also adding some moss in between just so that I can go a bit longer without watering my conditions in the summer are very very hot um, and things tend to dry out very fast and I tend to water twice a week I obviously try to water a little bit more if it's very very hot like maybe every morning sometimes For the orchids that really need it the seedlings But if I can add some moss in here so it could hold some moisture that's even better It helps me last a while 
And also this bark is not very large. So the smaller the pieces of bark, the more moisture it'll hold. The bigger pieces of bark, the less moisture it holds, just because of the surface area and the gaps. So this is not giving me a ton of gaps, but it is enough gaps and it's gonna be able to hold enough moisture. So this is a medium grade um, bark, not very large, but it tends to work out for smaller pots. We're gonna top it off with the bark and I think this one is gonna be pretty happy in this setup. So we're not compacting anything down too much. We're just kind of letting it do its thing, making sure that the root system is being held by that bark, by that moss. We're not gonna need a support stake for this one, but it should be pushing out new roots soon. Note that sometimes new growths don't have the roots yet, but they will come in later. Ideally, you wanna wait for roots, but I don't wanna wait in this case. Okay, we left this one soaking and I actually got a bigger pot for it because of that root system being so big. So this one is the Richard Mueller cross with Catlia Mark Jones. I got this as a gift from my friend Vin from Florida and I'm just amazed. It was a tiny seedling. This bloomed twice for me. It has the cutest freaking blooms in the world and you know, I got it in like a two inch pot. I've had it for a year. I was not expecting it to bloom as quickly as it did, especially from a little like seedling pot. But we're gonna put this in this um, five inch pot. Arguably, I could have gone bigger. Like I might have to repot this in a year, but I don't wanna put, put it into something too, too big. We've positioned it, as I mentioned in the um, last, repot where the old growths are at the edge of the pot and the new roots are going to be facing towards the middle of the pot so that's where everything's going to grow from we want those roots to get down so i'm holding it so that it's positioned really well in there i want it to be comfortable and i think this orchid is going to be happy so i'm just basically just trying to do a good job of positioning everything in so that the roots are kind of like airy everything's gonna hold well i might need a support stake for this just given that it's gonna be top heavy because the new growth has not pushed out its full root system yet so it's a little bit lopsided but we're just gonna go in with that bark push it in there not too tight but just enough to hold the roots we don't want anything to be suffocated in there um, so I'm going to just keep layering with that sphagnum moss, that bark little by little. And I find that this works really well for me. Just a little sphagnum moss goes a long way. I could have gone a little heavier handed in the sphagnum moss, but I am going to stay on top of my waterings, but this should help. And this one I believe will be happy in this pot. All right, so I have these five inch repot me pots left. I have a lot of them that I never, never use, but I'm just gonna use them. I'm gonna bite the bullet. I really dislike these pots, but I have like 20 of them, so I gotta use them. I fully expect roots to come out from them. They're just really tough to use. So I start out with sphagnum moss on the bottom. That way if I bottom water, it kind of absorbs. Um, some of the moisture and this one is one of those that I couldn't get a lot of the LECA off it's okay the next time I repot this I bet those roots are gonna be dead so it's gonna be harder to remove like I said before when you up pot with more LECA you kind of have a problem where the new roots are gonna adhere and you'll never be able to get to the middle so but with organic it's okay like <laughs> organic is a little bit easier to remove so that's fine so I'm just gonna surround this with some bark, some organic. The worst thing you could do though is leave organic media in there that's gonna degrade, but LECA won't degrade. Now I ran out of bark, so I had to use, I just quickly got some more. This bark has not been soaked, so I'm gonna leave this pot to soak so that it absorbs the water. If you don't soak your bark, it doesn't really absorb water as well in a new repot, so that's why I'm gonna leave this pot to soak, but that's something we're gonna do later. I just left it here for the purposes of getting the repots done, and then we're gonna soak this. I'm gonna leave it soaking for about an hour after, and it should be plenty to get that 
bark all nice and hydrated and stuff but if you work with dry bark it just takes like it just doesn't hold the moisture as well in the beginning but it does take a while for it to just kind of like hold everything if that makes sense but yeah we're just we're just gonna keep going covering this with bark and this one is all done i have a feeling this one's gonna outgrow the pot very quickly we'll probably need to repot it in another year so we're gonna keep going this is another five inch pot this is the blc hawaiian leopard mei ling i definitely need to write a new tag for this one but we're gonna do the same exact thing we're gonna start off with a layer of sphagnum moss on the bottom this way if i bottom water it'll pull some moisture in and then we're gonna get some bark in there I, I like to keep the sphagnum moss nice and fluffy you don't want really dense pockets of sphagnum moss in there just lightly put it in there and it's totally fine this root system is amazing um, it's gonna push new roots it might dump those old roots i was a little rougher with it but note that i put the old growths towards the back of the pot the new growth towards the front of the pot and we're mixing that bark in there i'm kind of getting it in there so that it touches the little grooves and we're putting some of that sphagnum moss in there ideally you want the sphagnum moss to touch some of the sphagnum moss on the bottom that way if you bottom water it could kind of pull the moisture up miss orchid girl talks about that a lot that's one of the best things i've learned from her but i am not that particular i i water from the top but in a pinch you can bottom water and get some hydration in there but i'm just mixing little bits of moss little bits of bark and it's totally fine i find that this works out really well for me and i think i'm going to move all of my orchids eventually just back into this um, bark and kind of sphagnum moss mix um, and we will need a stake for this one it's very lopsided and top heavy but we're going to top everything off with bark for now and it should be good to go so i think this orchid's going to be happy here it's going to be doing well in this five inch pot and this one should last for a little while longer all we need is a support stake to hold it up and in a couple of weeks when those new roots go down it'll be fine so we are all done we did six repots together um I am going to get rid of that LECA. I will sterilize it later or maybe just get rid of it, but I don't know. I don't want to use LECA again. We put our support stakes onto the plants that needed it, so it's holding on to different growths. That way they're not wobbly. And um, we've put everything in a, between three inch pots and five inch pots. And I think these orchids are going to be happy. Now I'm going to have issues with space because when you go from little cups, to bigger pots, obviously you need more room. I'm also gonna need some more decorative pots to put these in. I mean, that's obviously not needed, but it kind of helps um, when you have a heavy pot at the bottom in case these get a little top heavy. We'll see how long some of these last. I have a feeling some of them will outgrow their pots quickly, but for the most part, I think some of these will be okay for two years, some one year, but we are all set. I will have more repot videos for you guys in the coming weeks. I hope you guys enjoyed and leave me a comment down below if you have any questions. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you next time. Bye everyone.